Hi, I'm Rachel Dorche and I'm a research engineer at the Bioinformatics and Biostatistics Hub in Institut Pasteur Paris. And today I'm going to talk about a project that is really um, important to my heart because it spoke about gender equality. And this project started almost three years ago and uh, it started with it started with a simple like casual talk during a book club where my dear colleague uh, Anna Julien were presenting one paper about gender disparities in science and uh, especially during conferences and question asking sessions and uh, we were at the same time organizing the same kind of conference in the national uh, level about bioinformatics and biostatistics and hosting it in, uh, in our institute uh, in Paris. The conference were due in 2021 and we were thinking that it should be the best moment to uh, reproduce this kind of uh, research and do it uh, also in our conference. So we build up this project. We um, write a job offer because we wanted to recruit someone with a background in social science because uh, Anna and me uh, we don't have this background and we were thinking that it's gonna be it could be like a great addition to this uh, kind of project so we write a job offer and we recruit uh, someone with a background in social science and um, due to the event uh, from those uh, two years um, with pandemic and the uh, virtual conferences we added an extra layer to this project uh, making the observation through a virtual event. Let's go. Let's talk about gender-based disparities and biases in science through an observational study of a virtual conference. As you may know, women encounter several barriers in academia, such as unconscious recruitment bias, sexual harassment, exclusive storytelling, etc., etc. And scientific conferences are a unique occasion to observe and communicate on gender bias in science at the same time. So inspired by previous work in 2021, we decided to observe a French national bioinformatics conference. Jobim exists for more than 20 years and for the second time in remote and is usually a conference with a young audience and the first contact with scientific conferences. Now a bit of history on this project. Back in early 2020, during a feminist cafe hosted by Anna Julien, she presented a paper on gender bias during question and session in scientific conferences. At the moment, I was part of the organization committee of Jobim and thought it could be a great way to replicate this observational study during the conference. We decided to write a job offer for a master internship student in social science, since it was a competence that none of us had, and we wanted to add a social science perspective to this project. So in October 2020, we interviewed and recruited Jean Luzang, a brilliant and passionate master's student with a great background in social science. And here we are in early spring 2021 with an overview of the study. We tried our best to make a 360 degree data collection of the conference, starting with data from the previous editions through registration survey to live observation and Zoom export and of course in-depth interviews. This way, we covered a different type of analysis from quantitative to qualitative. So let's start with data collection. Since I'm not a statistician or a social science expert, I will focus more on my part of the job on this project, which was the data collection. So the first step to collect data on attendees was through the registration form. We built up quite an extensive form to collect as much data as possible, at least legally. For the record, the conference was hosted in France, so we had to comply with French and European legislation, with, which is not always easy. For example, we had to make it really clear for attendees that answering questions for the study 
was totally independent from the registration, so we made all the fields linked to the study as optional. We avoid as much as possible any dark patterns. People had to check themselves boxes for agreement, etc. Plus, all the data regarding the study were stored in Institute Pasteur home storage. During the conference in July, we did live observation. We recruited nine observers and made more than 150 observations. We had a little schedule to observe each station and each station were observed by at least two observers. As a UX designer, I made my best to make the, this process easy for our colleagues. So I designed observation form, which greatly helped the observation and post-processing. At the end of the conference, we started the analysis of the collected data. The first data we analyzed was the data from past Jobim edition starting in 2000. We collected data on attendees and speaker gender from the SFBI data. The SFBI is an association that is in charge of the Jobim organization. Here you can see the evolution of women proportion in attendees. Stars indicate significant deviation from parity. We clearly noticed an effect of virtual meetings. Now, if we zoom in 2021 edition, we collected data on ages, professional status, gender, and belonging to LGBT community. Top panel is the count of attendees by age, category, and gender. Bottom panel is the count of attendees by age, category, and belonging to the LGBT community. Looking at the top panel, most of the attendees are fairly young, which is well known since Jobim is usually the first conference where a young student or researcher goes. Talking about LGBT community, it's important to document potential inequalities and a way to give visibility. Young attendees were more likely to answer yes, but more surprisingly women too. We confirmed the underrepresentation of women in question asked in a virtual conference with young attendees. Multiple asking is an excellent way to gain visibility and women don't do it. Looking at the result by session type, we see no difference between keynotes and contributed, but the effect is worsened in mini symposia. And finally, the quantitative analysis. In-depth interviews are time consuming. We selected a set of seven individual representative of the category identifying during the quantitative analysis. Each interview was one hour long. By applying a coding line by line on the interview, anthropologists generate a codebook to summarize the recurring theme in interviews. For example, discouragement include discouragement for pursuing a career in science or negative indifferent reaction to speech. The following slide will be like few examples of the sentences get from the interview transcript so like that you can have a, an overview of what have been said during those sessions. The second quotation shows the link between the impact of self-confidence of gender discrimination and then the subsequent impact of self-confidence on career. Interview of all gender were conscious about the issue. Some male interviewees seems oblivious of the problem and female interviewees showed a more active attitude toward inequality. Harassment was recurring in all interviews. Female interviewees reported incidents happening to them while male interviewees reporting, hearing, or witnesses harassment. The quantitative analysis demonstrate a persistent underrepresentation of women in conference and document the high prevalence of negative experience for gender minorities in science. The qualitative analysis allows us to understand better how this experience impacts gender minorities by undermining their confidence, which impacts their career choice. After all those observations and analysis, we wrote a paper, as scientists usually do, but we also build a guideline for STEM conference organizers. So if some of you are interested, let us know. We also hope to make a nice website with all the tools we created for this project, such as the script for Zoom experience 
soft analysis and observation forms and so on. And in the name of Anai and Lou, I want to thank you for your attention and thanks once again to all our colleagues who helped us with the different steps of this project. Thank you.